Hello, you guys. Welcome to episode 15 of the Farmhouse Knitting Podcast. My name's Dana, and I'm sitting here in my sunroom. I am so happy to be hanging out with you guys again. I have some knitting to show you, and I'm so excited. Um, first of all, if you're new, then welcome and thank you for coming and hanging out in my sunroom and talking about knitting with me. And if you're a returning watcher, viewer, I guess, um, thank you guys for coming back. And um, also everybody who had left really nice comments in the last video, episode 14, thank you guys so much because um, I announced in that video that we're expecting baby number four and you guys were all very kind and very understanding about my hiatus from the podcast for a while while I dealt with all the morning sickness and all that. So thank you guys for sticking it out with me because it's it's a hard time, but we're good now. It's the sun shining. Um, this is a knitting podcast, a little bit of crochet sometimes, but mostly a knitting, uh, knitting podcast. And um, I'm coming to you from Illinois. I'm in Northern Illinois in the woods in my farmhouse. I'm really excited to talk to you guys today. I have some knitting projects finished and off the needles. I have one whip that I kind of just started and was playing with a little bit. So I'll show you a little bit where I'm at with that, but I'm really excited to show you what I've been working on. And also I have lots of really cool yarn and an update about one of my local yarn shops, which if you're anywhere local to here, um, you might not know, or you can feel my, you can feel the pain with me. Um, so I went to a local yarn shop, one of our local yarn shops, and it's just a town over. We, I hadn't been there, um, in a year. No, a little over a year. And I couldn't find this place. So first of all, it's in a town called Geneva and the yarn shop was called Needle Things, or Needle Thing, Needle Things. And um, it's in this really pretty downtown of Geneva. Uh, like I said, right by us, it's gorgeous. And I was so excited. I pulled up the address on my phone because after I walked by up and down the block a few times and didn't see it, I was like, okay, well, I'll look on Google Maps. It said it was there. What was there was now some like winery and restaurant, most, mostly a winery. And so then I, I checked into Google Maps and I put in like the directions for walking. It had me trying to go around the back of this building. This, again, it didn't exist anymore. It turns out that this yarn shop closed down in, I believe they said August of 2020. Uh, because I had to actually go into the winery and ask them because I was I was like I, I have to know like did they move down the street are they completely closed are they online only because they don't have a website apparently and um they had never heard of it so then I went to another shop called the little traveler which is really close to there too and they've been around for a while so I was like oh they'll know and they probably have a lot of similar customers I had no idea what I was talking about. And so I was like, okay, this is not right. 2028, my yarn shop. And meanwhile, I am with my husband and our three little kids and we're just walking back and forth up and down the block. And like I said, I actually had to go into the winery and I'm like visibly pregnant uh, with my fourth baby because when you have had that many babies, you pop out way quicker. So this pregnant lady walking into a winery and I just got all sorts of funny looks like, are you lost? Are you, what are you doing? Because obviously you shouldn't be here. I was like, I just want to find my yarn shop. Somebody tell me where this yarn shop is. So sadly, Needle Things from Geneva, apparently not in existence anymore. Um, nothing is updated that I could find on a website or Facebook or Ravelry or anything like that. But I did finally go to our new location of our new local yarn shop. So not the same town of Geneva, but the town next to that, St. Charles, Illinois, there's a yarn shop called Wool and & Company. 
and they were right in the downtown area. It was really cute. It was like this old building. And last summer they moved. So now they're up one town in South Elgin, Illinois. <laughs> the yarn shops are just hopping all over the place. Uh, but I hadn't been there in well, since whenever they opened. Actually, no, I think they opened, they might have only just opened in the spring of 2021. Um, but you guys, it was wonderful. It was, oh my gosh. Okay, if you wanna see a full vlog about Wool & Company and their new location, I do have a video up on my channel about that. I just uploaded it and so go check that out. It's, oh my gosh, it was like a breath of fresh air. It was this wide open, airy, but not, not like, um, not an unwelcoming feeling of a yarn shop at all. And it was glorious and I got lots of yarn. And of course, <laughs> um, I got some needles because I am now addicted to sock knitting. I didn't think it hit me. I thought bulky yarn for life. That's what I started with and I was team, oh gosh, I would knit with the size US seven or eight needle would be the lowest I could ever knit, like ever. And I preferred to do like size 10 and a half um, to size 13, sometimes 15 needles. But I have been knitting like crazy with sizes US two and now I'm starting something with one needles and it's like a foreign concept to me because it just it's so weird but I love it and I understand why everybody likes knitting socks I mean it's portable and um it's wonderful so I've actually knit socks for a, a while a few years but like I said only with size like worsted weight um I think I've only ever used size seven needles and so also my first pair of socks that I ever knit was a cable knit pair. I knit it once and then I went and I designed my own pair. So I've never actually even done a vanilla sock before and I've never used tiny needles until I'll show you one of my finished projects and one of my new whips um, had me doing both and so Oh gosh, guys, it's a new obsession started and I don't know what to do because I suddenly find myself also without any sack yarn because like I said, I've had a lot of bulky yarn. So I need to go explore some more yarn shops. I know there is at least one other about 20 minutes away from me that I've never ever been to. And um, so I have to go find some more sack yarn to fuel this sock addition. Uh, <laughs> addition. Well, I mean, I guess it will have additional socks. My sock addiction. You know what I want to do is complete a, what is it called? A sock, a box of socks um, where it's, you try to make 12 pairs of socks in a year. I know I won't make it to 12. I'm having a baby in October. Um, we just got a new puppy because why not? It's it's chaos already we have um right now three kids under six and then um like i said new baby in october we got a little puppy um which is a funny story you know what i'm gonna save the story for the end because those of you who are here for knitting are probably like you don't want to hear about my dog necessarily and you're here for the knitting you're like i'm here i want to see all the stuff I want to see the projects. I want to see the cool yarn. And um, like I said, the yarn shop video, hop over to my Wool & Company um, yarn shop tour video, uh, which is on my channel. So yeah, I guess that's all I have. I have my notes over here, which clearly is keeping me really on track. <laughs> okay, I talked about the yarn shop, my sock obsession. I'm gonna show you some finished knitting projects. You guys, this is a big deal because a lot of these, actually all three of these, I started with the best intentions at the start of the year, and then I got pregnant, and then I didn't wanna knit for three months, probably, four months. So these have been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I haven't done anything with them. So I'm really excited to show you guys. So I'll start with 
probably the simplest um, project and it's what got me back into knitting after I felt so gross for so long. And this is my farmhouse. I'll try to hold it up. This is my farmhouse tea towel <laughs> as I hold it up to the ceiling. My farmhouse tea towel. Um, this is a pattern on Ravelry from Darling. I'll show you just the edge a little bit. From Darling Jador, and I'll put all that info down below. Um, it is all knit. I used my, whew, I have two different labels. I don't know why, but I used the Taki Yarns Cotton Classic. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, and like I said, I'll put this all down below. I use the colors linen for the white. And then this color here is called dark teal. And this is really just what got me back into knitting. It was a really simple thing to knit. Um, I ended up making it smaller than their dimensions because I kind of felt like it was good. Um, it is bigger than just like a dish cloth that I would um, knit or crochet, but I also didn't think I would really use like a full sized tea towel necessarily. I don't really, I don't know. Also, I was kind of just done with it. It was a really fun pattern and I love this yarn. Um, but like I said, it kind of just got me back into knitting and once I got back, got my, my um, my knitting mojo back. I was ready to move on to something else. I was ready to finish my socks, which I had started. I think I started them actually in episode 11 of this podcast. And also I had two sweaters waiting. One is finished. One is not. And it's sad, but that sweater, we, me and that sweater, it's the Kara sweater from We Are Knitters. We have a lot of history because I finished it completely one time pregnancy brain from the last pregnancy had me knit it in the wrong size and so then I tore it out and now it's half finished but I do have a finished sweater problem is it doesn't fit me right now so I'm going to insert like um some pictures I took of it and I'll hold it up now and I'll try to I'll try to share all of its beauty with you because I really am excited to wear it it's just it's not going on over this belly right now so Yes, um, that was my first finished object to share with you. Oh, and I don't have any more of the yarn left over to show you. I did somewhere, I actually think it's in the room where the puppy's sleeping, and so I'm not gonna go in there. Never, what is it, don't wake a sleeping dog, or let sleeping dogs, let sleeping dogs lie. We're just gonna leave him over there because he's, he gets all nippy and goofy when he's tired, so. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, okay, so then like I said, I finished this tea towel and then I kind of got the jitters out of my system and I was like, you know what, I need to finish my socks. I really wanna work on socks. I had also gotten back into watching some more knitting podcasts on YouTube, so. Oh, who have I been watching? I've been watching a lot of the crazy sock lady. And like I said, I've never really done socks, so I didn't even know who she was or what she's about. And um, I really like it. So anyway, um, yeah, I just, I got the sock bug. So this is also a hard one to show because I don't have sock blockers, but also the main pattern is along the front. So. I'm gonna insert um, some pictures I took of these socks too. But this is the Simple Cozy Sock Pattern by Hohi Locatelli. This is a really hard one to show, but it is beautiful. It's so soft. I actually knit it with Cascade 220 in the, com the color Summer Sky. And um, I have this much left over from the two. I don't have a label, but I believe it is 100% wool. And it's weird because it's a very soft wool and I'm excited to actually wear it because I've knit 
pure wool socks before and it didn't end up going well, but I was stubborn and I just kind of cruised through it and I will just like wear socks under it, like a, a thin pair of socks under it if it's too itchy. But this was like amazing. And you'll see, I actually got more of this yarn from Wool & Company because I just needed more of it and I, I really like it. It's so soft, it's so warm. Um, let's see, okay, what did I write about this? I knit size two, so the pattern has the option of knitting, um, so there's size one and size two are with, I might have this backwards, but size one and two are thinner yarn, and size three is if you use like um, more of a sport weight. I might have that backwards, but I knit the size two, I used needles, I think I used size two needles. Um, like I said, I started this three months ago and I got pregnant. I think I only had, I don't even know if I was to the heel at one point, but um, then I cruised through and finished it and wanted to finish the next pair, the next, the next one to finish the pair. And I'm really happy with how those turned out. Um, it didn't have me do anything new that I had never done. I mean, I've, I worked cables before. Um, it had me doing short rows. This is a cuff down sock. I feel like I was going to say something about it. Oh, just the fact that the yarn is so skinny. This was my very first pair of socks with, um, size two needles. Like I said, it, I had only ever done size seven. So that was a big culture shock for me, but like I said, I liked it enough to want to keep doing it and actually even go down a needle size. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with how those turned out. Those are really nice. And I like the summery color. They're wool, so they keep you warmer when it's cold, but also they, I don't know the science behind it, but you know how wool can also keep you cool in the summer. So that's good. I feel like it's something I can wear now unlike my sweater, but I will show you my sweater. So I will try to show you my sweater. I'm sorry if it's loud. I have to keep it in a box because it's so big. So this sweater, I will also insert a picture for you guys, but this sweater is also by Darling Jador. It's the Camp Fire sweater. I'm not gonna really get this whole thing in there. This thing is a beast. I mean, it was really easy to knit, but it's so warm and heavy. I'm actually kind of sad I can't wear it to go camping this summer or out at our bonfire because, like I said, it's not going to go on over my belly right now. Um, oh my goodness, it's so nice. So this is Knit Picks um, Tough Puff in the color Bark, I believe. And I ended up actually, I knit the size, I think they're size small, medium, large. This is the size medium. And I ordered actually an extra skein from what it said because I'm learning that I think my gauge is just naturally looser and I always check my gauge and it's okay. And then I think when I'm like not testing myself for my gauge, my gauge, um, my tension loosens up a little bit. So I think I use more yarn than, um, than most people would. So I actually ended up ordering a second, uh, or not a second, but another skein just for the seaming because I played some serious yarn chicken. Like I really wasn't sure about the sleeves. I actually had to take my last little bit I had and um, divide it up to finish the sleeves because I had no idea if I was gonna be able to finish it. And this time I did order for sure the right amount of yarn for it. Um, I think I just, like I said, knit a really, a really um, more of a loose gauge. And um, so I did end up ordering one extra skein, which if it's a cheap yarn, I might do in the future again, because if I know that I'm most likely gonna need another skein, it probably just makes sense just to get another skein. And um, it'll be in the same dye lot as what I'm using everything else in. I feel like that common sense me is saying that makes sense. 
my husband would be like, why are you ordering an extra stain each time, each time you're knitting something? But then you can use the scraps. You can do scrappy projects. I'm told it works really well for socks. Um, I have not done scrappy socks yet. I have only ever done cable knit socks. So uh, that's not true. I did knit a few years ago. It was like Patton's Croy, if you're a sock knitter that might sound familiar, where it's self-striping. Uh, there was no heel involved or anything like that. I knit for my husband and it was nice. I definitely prefer a heel because otherwise it just falls off and slouches and it just looks weird in the ankle and stuff. Um, <sighs> off topic. Okay, off topic. Um, okay, okay, okay. So I knit that in a size medium. I'll put all the info of um, the yarn. And so that's those are the three projects that I finished. And I know there are some knitting podcasters who finish three projects at least every time. And I wish that was me, but you know, I'm just happy that I have something new to show you guys. And I wanted to put this episode out last week, but I hadn't gotten the yarn to finish seaming my sweater. I was almost done with um, with the second sock and I was still working on editing the um, yarn shop vlog. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to wait one more week. I'll have more stuff to share with you guys. And I'd rather do that. I mean, my goal, I guess, right now in this season of life would be a podcast episode for you guys every other week. So like two a month. And then when things get real crazy in the fall, I'll take some time off and then maybe ease back in. But um, yeah, I just, it's, you celebrate the little things um, and any little bit of knitting time, I think is good. So um, what else is I gonna say? I really like having this podcast. This is a total side note. This is just like getting real. <laughs> I like having this podcast. Um, I like just talking to you guys. I mean, it kind of gives me accountability for actually finishing projects because I'm going to be completely honest. I will start projects and halfway through forget about them or just lose steam and then something else shiny comes along and I'll start working on that. But I feel like, I don't know, <laughs> this is really getting off topic. Um, but I just like, I like also reading your comments and that you guys appreciate having someone to talk knitting with because whether you have someone knitting in your life or not, I mean, I have my mom and my sister who also knit, but you just need, you need more knitting people in your life, right? You need to also be alerted to these cool yarns and stuff. Speaking of cool yarns, that's what I'm going to show you. Actually, you know, real fast, I'll show you one of the things that I just cast on, this will be fast because it's seriously like three rows done. Um, sorry, got to adjust. <sighs> um, okay, so if you're a sock knitter, you're not going to be impressed, probably. But this is my very first few um, rows of working with a size one, US one, um, nine inch knitting needle. And I'm using, I can't reach the label, can't reach the floor right now. So um, I'm using Knit Picks Stroll Fingering in Reindeer Heather. So I'm just doing a vanilla, whoa, hello. I'm just doing a vanilla um, sock pattern, as I guess what they call it. Like I said, I've only ever knit cable socks besides the one where you just made a tube. Um, so I kind of went backwards on it. Um, most people probably start with a vanilla sock or something a lot simpler. I started with cables. So I'm kind of going back to the beginning and trying to learn like the fundamentals of socks. And um, I mean, I understand it from, I don't know, I'm trying to wrap my brain around it with smaller needles, smaller yarn, you're not doing cabling. It sounds very therapeutic because if you're just knitting stock knit, that actually sounds wonderful for sometimes. Um, so that's how far I am into my sock 
my vanilla sock. Oh, um, the crazy sock lady. The vanilla sock pattern by the crazy sock lady is what I'm starting. I also bought a whole bunch of knitting, um, knitting sock patterns on Ravelry so that I can kind of learn and like, I'm not gonna just kind of push my way through it like I did with the worsted weight. Like I said, I, I knit one pair of socks and then I went on to designing my own. Like, okay, I got this. I've done one sock, I can do the rest. So with this smaller yarn, um, a couple other ones, I'm trying to think what other pattern I bought. So this was the vanilla sock pattern on nine inch needles from Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I also bought the I'm so basic sock from Summerlee, Summerlee Knits or Summerlee Designs, who also has or had a podcast and she is awesome and hilarious and I hope she has another episode soon because she was funny. She is funny. I don't know her, but she's funny. Anyway, okay, um, okay, now I showed you that. I'm gonna show you some of the yarn that I have been collecting, shall we say, in the past few weeks. Um, I'm sorry. It's in a bag and it's not making my jungle very happy right now. <laughs> I'm in the jungle. Um, okay. Um, what should I show you first? I don't know. I'm so excited and I just want to cast it on all of it, but um, I'm going to try to have some self, self control and, um, do one project at a time and not lose steam on it. Okay, the first yarn that I got was from Mandy's Makings. Mandy's Makings. And this is the colorway A Beautiful Rain. So I got two, oh, I forgot it's backwards. I got two, it's that share a pair in a beautiful rain that she always sells out of. I say always, but I just only discovered her a few weeks ago. And so I think I'm actually very lucky that I was able to get some right away because I think it's like a lot of indie indie dyers um, where it sells out really fast. And so I was really excited to get this. Now she is doing something with the summer or the um, crazy sock lady where it's something about summer sock camp, which um, this is not a color for, I don't think. I think she just dyed this up extra. And I jumped all over that because these colors are gorgeous. So one thing I know, for me at least, in um, in socks, I'm not really, and this might change, kind of like I, I never wanted to go and do small needles. I'm not as into the colorful socks for me. Um, I love the yarn, like the, the all the cool sock yarns where it's crazy colors. Um, I want to just decorate my house with those and not, not, um, words, <laughs> words and pregnancy brain. Um, if I could just hang the yarn skeins up like this, where it's all twisted up in all their beautiful colors, that would be awesome. But for the actual sock wearing, I'm a little more of a neutral, um, I like some tweed, but this I'm really excited about because this doesn't seem like a crazy amount of striping is gonna happen. Um, Cause I'm not a very stripy person, I don't think, for socks. Like I said, that could change, but I'm very excited. Um, I have to find a good pattern that's gonna work for them and I kind of wanna try cables with it. I know really colorful stripy sock or stripy yarn. I wouldn't, wouldn't want to make cables with because it, you wouldn't be able to see the cables and it just kind of looks crazy. But I'm actually wondering if a really simple cable, and maybe even the the socks that I just finished, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm wondering if that would be too crazy. Like, I don't know. We'll see. I'm also very much, maybe I'm just a boring sock knitter. I kind of only like one color in the socks. I don't, I don't love two tones, um, like a different color cuff and heel, but like I said, I'm new to sock knitting. I'm sure that that obsession will come to me soon and I'll be just knitting all sorts of things with it. So that's what I got, um, on Etsy. So I'll put her info on Etsy 
or I'll put her Etsy info in the description. You know what I mean. You know what I mean, right? Okay, so Wool and Company, this local yarn shop of ours, um, we walked in and we were overwhelmed. It was just, there was so much yarn. We hadn't been in a yarn shop for a while. I went with um, my sister and her kids, my kids and my mom. And so it was just a lot to take in. It was beautiful. There was yarn everywhere and um, everyone was really nice. And one of the very first displays that I saw had the most glorious yarn um, and I had never heard of them. Like I said, new to sack knitting. Uh, this is called Leading Men Fiber Arts. I'll try to see if I can show you it. This is the showstopper in the colorway Sand Dollar. Okay, so this is like, besides the Mandy's Makings one, this just is glorious. Is it gonna pick up? This just feels summery without being, for me, like too colorful and I'm really excited to make some socks out of this. Um, it is a local-ish to my area um, company. Their hand dyed in Clinton, Illinois, which I think is just south, south somewhere of me. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna knit with them yet. Like I said, socks. Um, I might. If I'm going to do cable, one of them is going to be cable. This one or Mandy's Makings. I'm going to try cabling and then the other one I'm going to try um, probably just another vanilla sock and maybe just like try a different kind of heel or a different technique because I've only done cuff down socks and I've only, yeah, I've done cuff down socks. I have done toe up socks, but it was with bulky yarn and it was baby socks. So I don't know if that counts. Um, okay, the other two things I got at Wong Company, one of them is starting to go all crazy. So I got two of them. It's more, like I said, more of the Cascade 220. Um, same as, sorry plants, same as what I used for my socks. And, um, I'm trying to remember the color names now. So this was the color silver. It doesn't say on the label and so I have to, I had to go look it up. And then this one, I probably didn't write down, did I? I didn't write down on here. I think I wrote it down in my notes for the Woolen Company video, but um, I will put it in the description. It's brown, um, it's brown. It's not the silver. I can't remember what it's called. That's gonna really bother me. Um, but I'm really excited because like I said, these worked really well for those socks and whether or not I make more of that same pattern, um, I'm not sure or we'll see, but I do wanna make more socks that are kind of like that. You know, I think I also like making socks is because I like taking, it's gonna sound weird. I do not have a foot fetish. I like taking pictures of my feet because I don't like taking pictures of my face. So if I'm needing to take pictures for Instagram, for example, I would much rather set up a really fun, like flat lay picture. I just have my feet in there in some really cute socks. Not like my feet, that'd be weird. But like my socks, you know, with some cinnamon rolls and that's kind of my thing. I don't like, like, I don't enjoy knitting hats or scarves and then having to take a picture of my face because then I start getting all you know we're all critical of ourselves anyway socks socks are where my heart and soul are taking me right now okay the last things I got <laughs> I'm a weirdo I'm sorry I'm a weirdo I like taking pictures of my feet in my socks um the last thing I got is I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it but it's Barocco Remix and they also don't have their name, the color name on it. Yarn companies, knitters and crocheters, I feel like, at least I, really like knowing what the name of our yarn is called. 
And sometimes, most times, that really sways our opinion about if, or our decision if we're going to buy it because yarn and nail polish and things like that, if it has a really cute name like Sand Dollar, I'm 100% more likely to buy it than if I pick it up and I see the color is 3933. Like that isn't as exciting. But anyway, tangent. I don't know what I'm going to knit with this. But I was very intrigued. My sister is working on a knit tank top. So this is a mix, it won't work for socks, I don't think. It's not really gonna hold a shape at all. This is a mix of nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, and linen. And it's all recycled fibers. It's totally like my colors, kind of a gray with like tweed in there. Um, it's a size eight needle, so if I'm feeling like my hands are cramping up and I need a break, I'm excited to go into those. So um, I'm actually thinking about making a shawl, and I don't know, I've never actually done a shawl. I don't really wear shawls, but I think I'd wear it wrapped really cute like a scarf. Um, so I don't know how much yarn you need for a shawl, but that I think, something that doesn't really need to, um, you know, hold its its shape as much. So, so that is my yarn haul from Wool and Company. Those are my finished projects, my work in progress, which still has a lot that needs to be done. Like I said, I only knit a few rows on. Um. Oh, I wanted to show you. So this, I went to me backwards. Um, I'll just show you the yarn then. So instead of the card that came with it. Um, the yarn that I had gotten, Mandy's Makings, is, um, well, I'll read you their mission, their little card that came with it, which I thought was really cool, and, um, I support 100%. So, their mission is to provide high-quality, handcrafted items to our valued customers at a reasonable cost while bringing awareness to human trafficking and giving back to those affected. So, um... I forgot how much, but a portion of her, the sales that um, her yarn gets goes to the A21 um, group, nonprofit, uh, which helps to fight human trafficking. And so I thought that was very cool. I actually, I knew that they, um, I knew that that was a cause that was important to them, but I actually didn't know that until, I didn't know how much of it until I got the card and checked it out. And so, cool, I like I like that, I support that. So, um, let's see. I showed you the yarn that I got. Um, I think that's all that was knitting, knitting content for this episode. Um, so I'm gonna sit and knit and chat with you guys a little more if you want to hang out you're more than welcome to uh if if you want to go and wait for next episode I completely understand and um I'll see you guys next time if that is the case but I'm going to oh I meant to show you that this was how much was left of my um my sweater like I said I had to buy a whole extra skein which is a pain in the butt but Knit Picks was wonderful. Can I just say, I'm not talking about Knit Picks, um, some of the yarn I got until next week, but, or not next week, huh, two weeks, hopefully two weeks, fingers crossed two weeks, um, because it was a bare yarn and I'm going to be talking about yarn dyeing then. Um, but when they sent that package, they, I, I had ordered four skeins of like whatever the bare yarn was from Knit Picks. Two came and the packing slip said four, so I called them. No questions asked. They were, she was, whoever I talked to was like the nicest and just put in the order. It came just a couple days later. And um, same with this extra extra skein of Tough Puff. I couldn't believe it. Their customer service and um, the shipping times was amazing. Especially because I was like, oh, I want to put out this episode. And um, I can't seam one side of my, my sweater. So that was really cool that that, that went so fast. Um, all right, I'm going to move all this stuff. So how are you guys? I really like reading in the comments. Um, even when I was sick and uh, 
wasn't really getting on here and um, I wasn't even as great about responding in the comments when I was feeling sick, but anytime I see your comments, I, I think I don't give it a thumbs up. I think I give it a heart and um, I really just like hearing where you guys are from and I don't know, you guys keep me company and I think it's really cool to see um, that just through YouTube, you can hang out and knit with other people and especially through not as much going on the past year. Um, I think that's really cool. Like you could just have been at home and you're still knitting with somebody. So I think that's cool. So let me know what's going on with you guys. We are, um, well, the day that I'm filming this, so hopefully this will go out in two days on Thursday. Um, the day that I'm filming this is Tuesday, June 1st. And um, just so you see, I'm, I'm working on my sock if I keep looking down. Um, so June 1st, so we just had Memorial Day. We didn't do a whole lot. Like I said, I was trying to finish up my last little bit of my sweater and my socks. Um, we have been working on our garden like crazy. Oh, the story of the puppy, okay. So about a year and a half ago, okay, I need a drink before I, before I dive into the puppy story. Oh, cause he's, he's really cute, but he's a handful. About a year and a half ago, I think I was pregnant with Lucy. Um, we decided to get on a waiting list for a breeder that my parents were actually also on the list to get. Um, they got on the list maybe six months before us or something like that. So they breed West Highland White Terriers, which also known as Westies. If you if you don't know what they are, it's like the the little white dog that's on the Caesar dog food boxes or cans or whatever. Um, so we were expecting to get a call in like the fall, this fall, 2021 to say that we would have a puppy coming. And we wanted a boy because we, at that point, knew for sure we had two girls. We were waiting on finding out the gender of Lucy, but we knew for sure we wanted a boy dog. So once we found out this past, what, spring, early spring, um, that I was pregnant and due in the fall, we were like, well, shoot, we're gonna have to ask whenever they call in like September, or October, or November, or whatever, and ask if we can just like not be off the list, but would they just skip us over temporarily and just do that for maybe six months or something, six months or a year, however long they would let us skip while still being on the list. And so we kind of just wrote it off like, okay, we're, we're just not gonna get a dog this year. Sad that we can't get a chicken or chickens who can't get a dog, um, but we're gonna have a new baby in October. So then, and this is where it gets really weird because like I said, we wrote it off. We weren't even thinking of it. And then the night before I got the message that there was a puppy for us, me and my husband were talking and I was, it just randomly came up. I was like, well, what if, what would happen? And this was like a, a funny question. Like we didn't even really consider because we had no, like there's no way this would happen, right? We weren't picturing this happening at all. I was like, well, what if they called us and said there was a puppy ready before the baby was born? And we just kind of laughed. We're like, no, that, that wouldn't happen. They said fall. And um, if anything, it could be like August or September, which would be like really close to the baby and, and just too much. Like we wouldn't do that. So the next day I was at my sister's house and I got an email saying that one of the pup, one of the mom and one of the moms just had her litter and there were three little boy puppies and would we be interested and I was just like oh my gosh I want to say my first reaction was like this is crazy no way but my first reaction was like oh, what's the word just kind of like I just like like it was like an immediate yes like yeah that's the right thing to do like this is what we're supposed to do followed by what the heck like why would we do that that's crazy so I um I forwarded the message to my husband and he 
responded basically by saying it's up to me, which meant he was fine with it. And I was like, okay, this is really crazy because he would be the one, he's like Mr. Logical. He would be the one saying, there's no way. Do you understand how crazy that would be? He was fine with it. So um, I talked to my mom who at that point, their puppy was maybe six months old or so. Um, and kind of got her opinion about it because she had just gone through having a puppy and their puppy was a handful. Um, and so I kind of just wanted to talk to her about it and then we decided to do it. And so um, a month and a half later, we went and picked him up and it was a total surprise for our girls. My mom came over after one of my daughter's soccer games and just had like, we call it like just a date. They had no idea. And then we pulled up that afternoon and walked into the door with a little white puppy and they were so excited. So I did write notes because I knew I would start rambling while I'm knitting with you guys. Okay, but I do have progress on my, my cuff here. So this is that vanilla sock by the crazy sock lady. Um, oops. Oh. I was going to share three things, three things that um, I'm listening to, watching, and um, lighting. So the first one, what I'm lighting, that's my candle. I am slightly obsessed with candles, as I know a lot of knitters are. And um, I had like Kohl's cash, um, if you, are from a different country. Kohl's is like a department store and if you certain times of the year they'll have things going where if you spend a certain amount then you can get ten dollars for each however much you spend or whatever. So I had Kohl's cash and I didn't know what to spend it on so of course I went into Kohl's and I checked out the candle department um, and so the brand of the candle that I am obsessed with lately is actually Sonoma which I didn't know they make candles. I guess, I guess they make all sorts of things. Um, but it's called Fresh, Fresh Morning Donuts. Make sure I read that right. Um, but it just, it smells like fall. I'm not really picking up on donuts so much, but it smells like fall. And for somebody who is very much a fall girl like me, and um, I do like summer. I do like doing bonfires at night and stuff, but I don't like the heat of summer. And so um, I am looking forward to fall, which seems very weird and ungrateful to say as we're heading into summer and nowhere near fall, but um, it has been bringing me a lot of comfort that I can make the house smell good like fall, especially on a rainy summer day, which is really not my favorite, um, I at least, I like summer when the sun is out and we can go be outside and have the sprinkler and the little blow up kitty pool and stuff but rainy summer days are really not my favorite so when I can light that candle it really does make a difference um and then I have been watching like I said earlier in the podcast a lot of um knitting podcasters on YouTube which I had before but I hadn't discovered these two podcasters because like I said I wasn't doing socks very much so um besides the crazy sock lady uh I have also been watching knitting traditions and she doesn't just do socks she does all sorts of things that she likes to knit um but I really like her style and the sweaters and patterns and yarns that she chooses are my kind of style like it's not super bright and um she also seems to be where she likes the rustic look a little bit too. So um, that's been really relaxing for me to watch. And then the last um, podcaster I've been watching a lot of is Nitty Natty from, or Nat, Natalie from Nitty Natty, um, which I have more in common with her than I thought I would. I don't know. I She just moved to like, in New York City and um, she's married and I have like I said this carload of kids and I'm out in the country so I thought we were just kind of opposites she likes to knit um, 
a lot of scrappy socks, but she is really, really sweet. She's funny. I like learning a lot of things from her about sock knitting because, um, like I said, I'm new to all of it. So it's been really entertaining to watch her YouTube videos also. Um, and then also on YouTube, she does a really good job of um, just having stories up all the time and just taking you through her knitting, but also through her life. Because if I, if I got it right, I think she's only in New York City for a while, um, or at least in that specific area for like a year, I think is what I, what I thought I heard. Um, so it's kind of cool. It's like this experiment, um, for her and it's not really a getaway for me because I actually would not, um, I don't think I would enjoy living in the city, but it's kind of a different kind of escapism for me because most people are the opposite where if they live in the city or the suburbs, like they might dream of escaping to the country or at least like a quiet day in the country type thing. Um, not everybody, but um, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm in the country. So it's almost like that's a totally different world watching life um, from her window and you can just see all the buildings and hear all the sounds and that's been keeping me company while I'm knitting all these things. While I got my knitting mojo back with all my yarn. I'm so excited. I have to find my ball winder because I didn't remember how to use it because now that I have yarn again, I had yarn. I just, like I said, I, I really wanted sock yarn. Um, I need to remember how to um, ball it up into a ball, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay, so, oh, and then listening to, I'm also very into podcasts, um, and I've been listening to a lot of beginner podcasts. There are two. One's called Pioneering Today, and one is called Old Fashioned on Purpose. And actually, you know what? Another really good podcaster is um, Simple Farmhouse Life, and they all kind of have their own specialties in that, like, gardening, homesteading world, uh, but they do have some really good episodes for beginners, and I feel like it's very helpful for me to listen to that while I'm, like, washing dishes or something. Um, like I said, learning a little bit about gardening because that was never really something super comfortable for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I really like podcasts. I actually thought about for a while starting a podcast. I did start a podcast <laughs> before I got pregnant. It was um, specifically for like knitting moms. And then I got pregnant again and then I wasn't doing anything. And then I changed the name of it to also be like for knitting moms. And I haven't decided if I'm going to publish that podcast. I don't know. Um, for me as a mom, I really like listening to podcasts. Um, I like watching them when I can actually sit and knit and um, like learn from them or just take in all the beautiful yarn they're buying and all the projects they're doing. But when I can't, I don't want to just listen to a YouTube video and not be able to see. So I do like listening to podcasts. Um, and I feel like that's a very common thing among, amongst my, um, my friends in the same like season of life. And especially because when you have little kids running around and you're always doing laundry and always doing dishes, um, it's very hard to actually sit down and watch something for very long before you're pulled up again. But you can just walk around with like a little um, your piece in and you can listen to a podcast. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with that or if I'm going to publish it or if it's just going to live unpublished forever. Um, but the reason I had started it, I'll just, I'll just go into it. The reason I started it and like I said, this might not turn into anything. Um, uh, if it sounds like something you guys would listen to, let me know because that was the other thing I was kind of like, this is like really narrowed down. This is a small, narrow niche. I don't know if anyone will be interested in it, but I kind of felt like moms my age 
can sometimes be overlooked in the knitting community as a whole. Um, not everybody, but I did feel like there are a lot of indie designers and indie dyers who are like young and single or they don't have kids and they're wearing different styles than I am. Um, no offense to crop tops, but after baby four, I cannot wear crop tops. <laughs> so don't, um, I don't wear the same things as my mom or my grandma and I'm not interested in talking about the same topics all the time. Um, and so I kind of felt like I really wanted to, I don't know what the word is. I like, I wanted to be the knitting friend, my age talking to myself. That sounds weird. Not talking to myself. But, like I wanted there to be that space where it was like knitting moms, not of a certain age, but just like, let's address the fact that most of our budget goes to diapers and not $30 skeins of yarn. And a lot of our time is spent doing, making meals for people and wiping people's butts all day and not like having a lot of time to knit or work on new things. And, um, and then also obviously the styles, like, like I said, crop tops or just, um, I don't know, different things like that. I don't know. That was just, those were my thoughts before I got pregnant and then I got pregnant and then I got distracted by being pregnant. <laughs> and so, um, that's what that podcast was going to be about. And it was going to be just an audio podcast. Um, not on YouTube, not a knitting podcast. It would be basically if like a mom podcast met, uh, not even a knitting podcast because it wouldn't only be so much about, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, and that's probably part of it is that it's like a narrow niche and not a lot of people would be um, listening to it, but it kind of doesn't matter, I guess, that not a lot of people would be listening to it because just having that community there for the right listeners would be enough for me. But then I also kind of don't know what the podcast would even be. It's not like a mommy podcast but it's not a knitting podcast, somewhere in between. And now I'm rambling. This is just like, I'm trying to work it out in my brain. And um, for some reason it's like, it's on my heart. Like I can't let it go. Um, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do with it yet. <laughs> so um, yeah, like I said, if, if you are sort of in my stage of life or can appreciate like if you are past the stage of life but can appreciate like okay that would have been helpful like having mom friends is helpful but having knitting mom friends would be also like just like life-giving <laughs> in some instances um yeah let me know if that is something that'd be interesting I don't know but I think I've rambled long enough and um I am going to finish this row and I have to say, for this being the smallest needle I've ever used, the size one, and the smallest, skinniest yarn I think I've ever used, it's going really well. I only have a little bit of soreness here. Um, nothing too bad. Most of my back is sore because of the pregnantness, but as far as knitting, I don't think, I don't think that I am scared of small needles like I was before so that is good um yeah I guess you guys have a good rest of your day if you stuck through for all this knitting and chatting um have a good rest of your day and I'll do another episode hopefully like I said in another two weeks so I will update you on this sock business the sock obsession and um see if I got any other cool things to show you guys. So have a good day, have a good start to your summer, and I'll see you guys next time.